given us everything we need today, and we're grateful. Yeah. Though we don't always say thank you, God, we want to take the time to say thank you now. Yeah. And then forgive us for the times that we haven't showed an attitude. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive us for the times that we haven't been grateful for the things that you've done. For when we looked over across the yard at our neighbors and and thought, wow, why are we doing better? Why am I not doing better? We thank you because the things that belong to us are going to be for us. Mm -hmm. And so thank we you, thank Lord. you, God. We thank, thank you, Lord. Thank that you, each Lord. life is, is individual and that you treat us as individuals. And so we thank you, God, that you know what we all need. And none, none of our needs will, will outlast your supply. You are the great supply. Everything belongs to you. And we're grateful for that. We are grateful for this opportunity that you've given us to study the word of God because surely man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Holy and the sovereign God. It truly is a light and lamp to our path and to our feet. And we are cleansed by the word of the Almighty God. We are washed by the blood of the Lamb. We give you glory and we give you praise that our sins have been washed away. Cleansed, never, never to be remembered. Again, we're grateful. That you love us unconditionally. Thank you, Even in the crookedness of our ways, God, you Thanks, love God. us unconditionally. Your love continues to be straight even in our crooked ways. Yes, we thank you so very, very much that you meet us at our, at our point of need. We thank you that you even look past our faults sometimes. Yes, God. And we give you glory, we give you praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Now, God, as we journey into the word of God tonight, go before us right now. Illuminate, shine the light on the dark places and give revelation and insight tonight like only you can. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher and yes, you're the you guide. Yes, you are, Holy Spirit. I'm only, I'm only a tool in the hands of you. And so speak your oracles to your people, line upon line, precept upon precept. Use him, Lord. Hear a little Use him. A, a little, God. I pray now that as I decrease that you truly would increase. We want to hear from you and you alone. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Soldiers in the army of the Lord, present on. This is my weapon. I am armed and dangerous. Look out, devil, the fight is on. Amen. What kind of fight are we fighting? The good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Yes, y'all sound so good. Go ahead on now. Just see the first, my Lord. Hallelujah. I see you. You Amen. Welcome to y'all who are viewing my social media. For y'all who are here personally in the room, God bless you. Thank you for being uh, at Bible study tonight. Get your pencil, get your pens, get your piece of paper, get your recording device, anything that you want to do. But ensure, please, please ensure that you pull your Bible out so as we journey through the Word of God tonight, you can follow along. We want to start our teaching over here in 1 John chapter 5. That's the foundation for our teaching. We want to go over here to 1 John chapter 5. I want to read verse 13 to 15. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We're still dealing with prayer prepares me. Now it's time to hear back from God after you pray. That's what we'll be dealing with. But we want to start in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, as we begin our teaching tonight. Just as a reminder, just as a reminder, uh, one of my most favorite scriptures is Philippians 1.6. I will be confident in this very thing that he who has begun a good work in us is faithful to complete it. Say, I'm confident. I'm confident. Yeah, I'm confident. confident. I'm confident in God and in the word of God. That's why we're going back over here to 1 John chapter 5, 13 to 15, because as we talk about the subject that we're dealing with, God said, when we pray, are we, are we really expecting an answer from him? And if I don't have the confidence that I'm supposed to have in God, then I won't expect an answer from God because I don't believe that God will do the thing that I'm asking him for. But when we look at these verses of scripture, uh, Sister Betty, when we look at these scriptures, these scriptures says to us some, some things that we really need to hear if we are going to be able to benefit from prayer. If we're going to be able to benefit, say it for me, benefit, benefit. from prayer. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not benefiting from prayer. Because there are some aspects of prayer that's missing. So though when those things are missing, you can't benefit from prayer. One of the things, watch this now, one of the aspects is, watch this, one of the things that we have to remember is obedience. Say that for me. Obedience. obedience. When obedience is absent, you cannot benefit from prayer. Say faith for me. Faith for me. A lack of faith in what faith is missing, you cannot benefit from prayer. 
Say sacrifice. 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 If you're not willing to make sacrifice, you cannot benefit from prayer. Who that's good, y'all? Mm -hmm. Those three things have to be, they have to be intact if I'm going to benefit from prayer. I got one more for me. Say stay out of your flesh. Stay out of your you flesh. You got to stay out of your flesh because if you're in your flesh, you can't benefit from prayer. Those four things have to be intact. I have to walk in the spirit so I why this so I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh if I'm gonna benefit from prayer. Ooh, that, that word fits real good in my mouth. Benefit. You have to you have to do the kind of things that's necessary to benefit from prayer. Mm -hmm. Because everybody who calls themselves praying are not benefiting from the act. They're not benefit, they're not they're not benefiting from the act that they are. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because we go through the motion, say that for me. We go through the motion. Through the and motion. here's what the scripture called that. It, it calls it, watch this, the scripture says that there is a form of godliness, but it denies the power. So we go through this thing that looks like prayer. It's a form of prayer, but it's not real prayer. And so when I go through, just go through the motions, brother Dan, when I'm just going through the motions of it, I don't benefit from that because that's something I'm doing in vain. So these scriptures that we're looking at is to help me. Watch this. Get in the place to where I can benefit from prayer. Listen to what it says. These things have I written unto you that believe. So it's all, already talking to us about what? Talking to us about faith, having faith, because that's what faith is. It's believing. Right. Watch this. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Why else can it benefit from prayer? Because I'm praying to the wrong God. If I'm not praying to the right God, I don't benefit from from prayer. If God bless me, brother, we're going to talk about all these different gods that we have out here and how there are so many people who are serving gods that cannot help them. Mm -hmm. Do not help them because they don't have the ability, sister, to help them, but they keep going to those same gods. Right. So if I'm not praying to the right God, watch this, I don't benefit from prayer. Mm -hmm. Watch this, the next thing it says. That ye may know that you have eternal life. Okay, so watch this. So if I don't understand and believe that if I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I have eternal life. Meaning in, that there's a there's a pocket of us out here that say we're Christians that don't believe once saved, always saved. Hmm. And, and if you can't believe that very thing that Jesus came to do, I listen, y'all, I, I, I love it when God take me here. How can you believe God for anything else if you can't believe him for the very thing he sent his son to do. He didn't just send his son to save you. His son got to keep you saved. Mm -hmm. y'all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not good enough to save you if you can't stay saved. If he can't keep you, the one who saved you is the one who has the power to keep you there. Oh, y'all. For by grace are you saved through faith. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So the same grace that saved you has to keep you saved. That's why you still have grace. That's why you have to have grace, because without grace, you'll get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all, come on. If, if grace, if mercy and grace is not there, you'll get what you deserve. And so the grace that saved me is the grace that keeps me saved. Right. That does not give us, listen, Brother Timothy, that does not give us a license to live hellishly or to live ungodly or to live unholy. Right. Because people that do that are not saved. People that think that way are not saved. Watch this now. All of this is important if I'm going to benefit from prayer. There's some things, watch this here. There's some elementary things that I have to believe if I'm going to believe this. And the first thing, brother, I got to believe, watch this, y'all. The first thing I got to believe is that the one that came to save me can keep me saved. Because if, if he can't do that, how can I trust him to do anything else that's written? Right. Oh, help me, somebody. If he can't do that, then that's nothing else I can believe and trust him for. Why would he go prepare a place for me that I might not get to? <laughs> oh, y'all. Why would he go prepare a place for me and say he's coming back to get me to take me to that place where I can be with him forever if right. I can't believe that I can't believe him for nothing else? Right. He don't go get a place prepared for me just in case. <laughs> just in case I make it. That's not Bible, man. Y'all pray for me, please. I, I, didn't, I didn't intend to be here, but this is where I've been led. If I can't believe, how can I benefit from prayer? Watch this. If I can't trust the God that, that, that so loved me, that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believed on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. How can I believe that? How can I believe anything else if I can't believe that? 
Why would I even pray to a God that I can't trust? Are y'all? How could I pray to a God that I can't trust, that I have no confidence and faith in? If I'm going to benefit from prayer, I got to believe the elementary things about God first. Before I can believe in this, all of this other big stuff, I'm supposed to believe God about. I got to first believe him to be able to do what he came to do first. Mm -hmm. Because unless that's true, nothing else is. Right? right. Nothing else is true. Y'all praying for bishop? Mm -hmm. Watch this now. Watch this now. That we have eternal life and that we may believe on the name of the Son of God. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. This is verse 14. And this is the confidence, you see? Now, because I got to believe that first verse, I got to believe first, I got to deal with verse 13 first. Mm -hmm. Because until I deal with verse 13, I can't have the confidence that's in verse 14. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Watch this now. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. We there, right? Mm -hmm. And so we understand he's not just listening to us just to hear us. He's listening to us to respond to us. Mm -hmm. He's not just listening just to hear you, just for the sake of hearing you. He's listening, John, because he wants to respond. He wants to do what he's in your life to do for you. He want to do what you can't do for you. And that's why we call upon him to do things that we can't do for ourselves. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's the reason for God. Is that right? Right. God knows everything. Is that right? Yeah. He's not a man. He knows everything. Is that right? Yeah. He has all power. He's omnipresent. Omnipresent. And he's omniscient. He knows everything. He's in all places all at the same time. And he's got all power. But I have to believe that about God if I'm going to benefit from prayer. If I'm going to have confidence, I have to believe that to have confidence in him. Here's where the confidence come in. He's not a liar and he cannot fail. I have to believe that about God if I'm going to benefit from prayer because believing that will cause me to what? Pray. Believing that will cause me to pray. It will push me to prayer because I can. I got confidence. I believe that God is going to, watch this, he's going to hearken to me and he's going to respond and give me the thing. Why? Because he promised to take care of all of my needs according to his riches and glory. glory. Come on, y'all. And if I can't get that, Brother John, why would I go before God and pray and ask God for anything else if I can't believe that? Right. That's what builds my confidence in God. Is that right? Yeah. So watch this, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according, don't, don't forget it now, because I'm going to benefit from prayer, i got to be asking things according to his will. Don't forget the will now. i got to be asking according to his will. Watch this. Watch this. According to his will. He heareth us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hear us, say, I know it. I know it. Why does, I know it if I'm praying according to his will. Right. I know. That right? Hear, watch this. Yeah. And I know. If we, if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, the scripture is clear, asking you shall receive. Mm -hmm. Seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be opened. Is that right? Yeah. So if, if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know, watch this now, say that's confidence. That's confidence. If we know that we have the petition. Watch this. This is important. We have it. Not going to get it. Come here, y'all. We have it. Oh, Lord. Brother Timothy, if I know that, listen, listen now. We know that we have the petition. Mm -hmm. Why do we know we have it? Because it's already done. It's up to me to possess the thing. I have to believe it to possess the thing. By your faith, you have. By your faith, you have. By your faith, you have. Is that not what Jesus constantly said? Yeah. Your faith have. Your faith did. Your faith, your faith. So if I have the confidence, watch this, John, I already have it. Because faith is the fetcher. It's the vehicle that brings it back. It goes and get it and brings it back. Right. I already have it. As soon as I believe, I already have it. Listen to what he says. <laughs> we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Mm -hmm. We have to go back to Brother Timothy. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting ready to take you to a, 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 a couple of verses of scripture. 
in the book of Acts, in, in Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 18, the people are praying, but they don't expect to hear. Oh, y'all, we, we, we got to deal with this. We got to deal with this, sir. Because there's too many of us, there's too many of us, watch now, there's too many of us going through the motion, getting on our knees, talking about we laying before God and everything, but we're not expecting an answer from God. And we know that by our own actions and behavior. The church, listen, we're going to see where the church gets together and they pray for Peter, but they don't expect Peter to show up. Come on, sir. That's ridiculous, isn't it? They pray and they going through the motion. They doing this thing called prayer. They the church and gather together to pray for this man and they don't expect God to release him. They expecting him to die in prison because his brother got killed. So they expecting him to die. Okay, why pray and be expecting? Stop it. Most of us feel like God is far away, but what what we're reading is is that God wants to have interaction with us. Mm -hmm. He He wants us to expect that He's right there. Believe that He's right there, and that's what a relationship is: give and take and communication. And He wants to communicate with us, and most of us just don't expect that. Here's what the scripture says. Watch this now, because I'm I'm, I'm getting ready to walk with her. Here's what the scripture says. Draw nigh to God, mm -hmm. and God will draw nigh to you. Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so I have a position that I have to take, mm -hmm. right? Now I can either I can either follow the instructions that's given to me, mm -hmm. right, or not follow the instructions and stay where I am, mm -hmm. right? It's not it's not up to God to draw close to me. It's up to me to draw because God is already here. here. Yeah. God didn't already left heaven. Come on. <laughs> I think so. I I think you know, you, you mentioned the the people that was, the, the church that got together and prayed for for Peter, right? Why and, he's talking? Go to Acts chapter twelve, man. and um <clears throat> and and I know what because they said based on what they had knew happened prior uh -huh. to his brother, what they were praying for it was a big thing, right? And. A lot of times we don't believe that God could do a big thing or a thing that seems impossible. Exactly. Um, and what I believe you're, you're getting at, you know, via the Holy Spirit is, like you said, expect God to be able to do these things because too often we, we view God the way we view people. Right. It would be very hard for you and I to go get somebody out right. of jail that has murdered 25 people, mm -hmm. right? right? Or or whatever the case may be, right? right. You right. know, it, it would be very difficult for me and you to go and convince governor whoever right. to pardon <clears throat> our, our friend or whoever the case may be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we put that same onus on God. It's like, no, this is this is an impossible thing. Right. Right. And, and 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 it's like God, I'm praying because I I heard you could do it. Right. But I ain't never seen it done before. Right. So it's like, no, nah, it ain't gonna happen. You know, so it's like you we're double minded. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what did the Bible tell us about that? We well, unstable in all of our ways. Uh -huh. And and don't let a brother think that he's gonna get anything from God if right. you, if he's double wavering That's the whole in his like faith. That. You yes. see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Don't 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 expect anything from God if you're wavering because I mean if you're wavering you don't expect anything exactly so I, I think that's what it kind of comes down to we have to realize like God is not man exactly the Bible tells us that uh -huh. he is not man for man it's impossible uh -huh. but with God all things are possible yes, and if we just hold on to that mm -hmm. and if we just believe it with just a mustard seed of faith uh -huh. we could see some things pop off we could we could now now watch this now because <clears throat> I want you to go to Luke chapter 1 Look at verse number 37. Yeah. In Luke chapter 1, verse number 37, we, we, say where we're, uh, uh, we see where we are in that verse. Is that right? I'm going to wait for y'all to get there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now look at what it says. For with God, 
nothing shall be impossible. Mm -hmm. We have to believe that, though, if we're going to benefit from prayer. We have to believe that very thing, that there's nothing too hard for God. It may be too hard for man, but there's nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for God. Is that not what God told Abraham when the angel showed up to talk to them? And, 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 and Abraham want to feed him because he don't want to leave. He want to do something for him, right? He want to take care of him. Okay, but before he leave, before he leave, he addresses the promise that God made. That Sarah was going to have a baby. Sarah laughs. And they approach, they say, why, why did you laugh? She said, I didn't laugh. They said, yeah, yeah, you laughed. <laughs> and they said, this thing yeah, might be Genesis too hard 18. for God, but it's not too hard or impossible man. for man. Yeah, In verse number 14, Genesis 18, 14, go there right quick, please. Amen. These are basic things that we have to deal with if we're going to benefit from prayer. Genesis 18 and 14. You have to come to this conclusion for yourself. Amen. The very first part of verse number 14. Here's the question. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Is anything too hard for Ooh. the Lord? You see, that's the, that's the first part of the verse, Brother John. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. This is the promise. This is, watch this. This is just confirming the promise that God had already made. They're growing weary in the way of doing. They're growing weary in the waiting. So the angels, they have to show up to say this to them. Watch this now because if they don't show up and say something to them, you know, they're going to they're gonna push all that back here. They're going to try to move forward, but watch what they're going to do. Neglect the promise. So right. God, it, listen, if you're not paying attention, right. because God don't waste time, mm -hmm. if you're not paying attention, God is not going to do the thing that he said he's going to do, or God will do something, watch this, and you won't know it's done. Mm -hmm. Can I show y'all? Let me share something with you. Do you know how many women have been pregnant and didn't know they was pregnant? Oh, yeah. How can you be pregnant, man? And not, well, not you, but I'm saying, <laughs> how can a woman be pregnant for nine months and right. not know she's pregnant, man? That's crazy, right. my mind. Come on here. How, crazy. how can that be? I don't, I don't I, I just want y'all to pray for your bishop right now. <laughs> can, can something happen? Can God do a thing and you not know it? Yeah. Yes. So says the Bible. My God. Yes. Pregnant nine months and don't know until the baby come. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. Ain't been to not one prenatal appointment. Yeah. Right. Not been under not one doctor sister. Yeah. That's crazy. And brother, that happens more than you want to admit to. Yeah. It happens so often. Mm -hmm. My sister, my, my next to my youngest sister, had been pregnant for seven months and didn't know it. She was pregnant seven whole months and didn't know it. I said, how is how is that? You got something living in you. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's crazy. And you and you it's just even just even thinking about just that situation, right? What we know about that pregnancy time. Your body is literally Yes, sir, it is. Yes, sir, it is. Yes, sir, it is. In a span of nine months. Yes, sir. This is all happening. Come and on. They, you're feeling it. Come on. And you don't even know what's what's going on. So it's almost like so we take that and put it into the other side of living. Come on, sir. We, God could be doing some things and we feeling it and oh, seeing it, hearing on, all of it on, and not on. even realize right what exactly is going on. Right going on. on. It's, that's just um, changing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, I just gained a little weight. Don't y'all love Bible study? <laughs> don't you love Bible study? <laughs> I, just ate, I just ate a burrito. That come, on, come on, man. Come on. Come on. I was sick the next come morning. Come on. Oh, oh. Count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope y'all praying for Bishop right now. This is good to me. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. This is what the Lord showed me. Uh, it's, he's really dealing right now with, with people's lack of faith. Yes, man. That's as he said, about. this is the year of great expectation. Yes. How Come can on. he do something great Come on, if man. you don't have the faith to, to carry out or to bring back or to fetch what he's speaking or what he said, what he yeah. promised? Well, he's trying to tell you if you go in to pray because he said, if you pray to me. You yeah, know? yeah. But uh, this is what he's showing me. So if if you're a child or a daughter or whatever and your, your parent is a, a millionaire, 
it's nothing for you to go to them and ask them for five hundred thousand, you know, to to ask them for something grand because right. you know they right. can do it. Right. And God is saying, you know, it's we're not going to him, asking him, or believing him for these things because of our lack of faith. We don't believe right. that he can do it, but he's right. so much more grander than the right. millionaire. He owns everything. We think he broke. Right. Yeah, he owns <laughs> right. everything. We think he, he's we broke. Be, we, we think he's in, incapable. We, man. Yeah. But it's like Jesus says, it's our lack of faith. There's so much more he wanted to do but the lack My of faith. Are, are we tracking what, what the Holy oh, Ghost is yeah. saying to us right now <laughs> in this very moment? Yes. We on. cannot benefit right. from prayer if we don't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And I got to stick with this, with this woman thing because... For a woman to be pregnant, that's a gift from God. That's a wonderful thing Man. for a woman Man. to be pregnant. And yeah. for her to be pregnant and not be able to enjoy. Come on, John. And not enjoy her pregnancy. Yeah. That's a sad thing, man. Mm -hmm. That's a sad thing. This is a gift from God. Most women want babies. I say most of them. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They want to experience that. They know that's a gift and they want to experience that. I'm not a woman, but I, I'm just, I don't listen to women. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like a woman if I can't have a baby. I don't yeah. feel like I'm being who God has created me to be if yeah. I can't bear a child. Right. I want that experience as a woman, as a mother. I want that experience. We need to want this experience from God, Amen. family. Amen. To benefit from prayer, to experience me talking to my Heavenly Father and watching Him do this thing for me. Wow. You want to experience that. You, give birth to it, yeah. you know, I think, so, so Tim kind of just alluded to this and it kind of just coming a little bit more clear to me. You know, like you said, Jesus said that there were many things that he wanted to do, but he yes, couldn't sir. because, because you know, they, they, didn't believe. They, they didn't believe, right? The colder part about that is um, we know that Jesus is the Word made, made uh -huh. flesh, and Jesus is mm -hmm. God, so the yes, Word was, was God and is God, right? Mm -hmm. People said a lot of things to Jesus. Yeah. We can we can view that as prayer. Like they yes, said a lot of that's, things that's, to Jesus, yes, sir. but never benefited from. Right, 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 so right. They right. said a yep. ton of things yes, to sir. Jesus, yes, sir. Didn't benefit up. Right, and right, then right. we even did, they even did some things that we could consider prayer. Right, rich young ruler. Right, right, hey, right. I want eternal life. Yeah, yeah. And you know not what I mean? benefit. And not benefit. He walks away sorrowful. Come on, family. How is it that you in the presence of God? And so often this happens. The presence of God is there, and there are people not benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. If yeah. we're going to benefit from prayer, there are some things we got to come to grips with. Or it's no use of doing it. Don't just go through the motion. You know how many people can't get healed, won't get healed yeah. because of doubt and unbelief? Will not walk in true healing because of that? Yeah. And that's not God's fault. It's mine or yours or the person. It's not God's fault. Watch, family. We, we in Acts chapter 12. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Let's deal with this because this is, <laughs> this is going on too often. Too, too often and we want to admit that this is going on. I'm talking about the church is supposed yeah, to church. be together. And the church is supposed to be praying for a certain something to somebody. And they're not expecting God to move. Why do that? Why are we doing that? If I tell y'all I got high expectations and I'm looking for something to blow up at it. <laughs> I, I told John today I purpose myself. You got to purpose yourself to be excited right now. Yeah. You, you can't allow anything to stop you from being excited right, right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Watch this, family. Watch this. Now, I'm going to start at verse 1. Listen to the verse. Start at verse 1 to verse 14. Acts chapter 12. Amen. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Y'all see that, right? Mm -hmm. Watch this now. And he kills James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it, watch this, because he saw it pleased the Jews... He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then, watch this, then were the days of unleavened bread. So let me pause here for a few minutes. Watch this now because here's what's going on with the church right now. All right? There are things that the enemy is doing right now to the church. Amen. To affect the church. Yeah. And the, and the, and the faith of the church. Right. 
He's doing that right now, oh, yeah. okay? Watch this now. And here's, here's what you got to understand. There's a world watching the church mm. yeah. right now. And watch this. And the world is, ex they, they are, they're excited about the things that are going on against the church. They are applauding it. The world is applauding what's going on, the effect that the things are going, that are happening to the church right now. Mm -hmm. The world is applauding it. And watch this, and because the world is, is applauding it right now, watch this now, the enemy want to continue to exact some more pressure on the church. Mm -hmm. so, so now we've got a president, we got a president that's in office and everything right now, and he want to take over where Obama left off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speak the truth. Uh-huh. And continue to do things to oppress the church. Mm -hmm. But the church needs to stand up yes. and not listen to the propaganda or the foolishness. Mm -hmm. Because, watch this, weapons are going to be formed, but they're not going to prosper. That's right. Come on, somebody. Right. The weapons are going to be formed, but they're not going to prosper. And, and, and so we see right here that Herod, he wants to exact some pressure on the church. It's talking about the church. It mentions the church right here, does it not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when he, saw, when he saw that it pleased the Jews, it pleased the people, I'm going to kill another one of them then. Mm -hmm. So since the world is applauding what's going on to the church, then they say, okay, well, since I see y'all like that, y'all like what's going on, yeah. let me see if I can exact a little right. bit more fear in the right. church. Mm -hmm. Pass another bill. Yeah. So now, watch this here. So now we got a so-called a, a higher strain of COVID out now. Mm -hmm. Ooh-wee. <laughs> the church got another opportunity to stand up. Yeah. I love our governor. Yeah. He said, I ain't moving. Yes. Amen. I'm not moving. Mm -hmm. That's what he said, John. He said, I'm not moving. Because they want him to put the mask restriction in there. He said, I'm not moving. Amen. See? So, so here's our hour. Here's our hour to stand up and have confidence in our God. As we pray, God said it's time to get answers. Mm -hmm. That's right. God said it's time to get answers. But I got to have the confidence that I'm supposed to have in God. And I can't let things that I hear in the media shake me. Watch this now. Watch this. Verse 4, and when he had apprehended him, talking about Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four, let me see if I can pronounce this, I was pronouncing it all day, <laughs> Quartyrenians, Quartyrenians is how you pronounce that word, watch this, of soldiers to keep him, watch this now, to keep him and to him after Easter to bring him forth to the people, verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Watch this. Are y'all ready? Mm -hmm. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all see this, right? Mm -hmm. You see this, right? Mm -hmm. now, 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 this is important that we see this because, because as we go on in the scriptures, Brother John, watch this. We find out, though, that they're really not expecting an answer from God. Right. They're really not expecting God to release him from prison. Why pray then? Why are we praying? Watch this. We're doing what the Bible says. They're praying, John, without ceasing. Is that what the scripture says? Mm -hmm. Does not the Lord say that we should pray without ceasing? That's what the, so they're doing what the Bible says, sister. Yeah. But they're not, going, they're not benefiting from the prayer, though. Right. Because they're not expecting it. So why do the word, sister, if I'm not expect? Come on, y'all. Expecting the picture. <laughs> This is this is where the church is. I'm talking, at large, this is where the church is. Yeah. I gotta say at large, brother. I'm not saying everybody, but at large, that's where we are as the church. We're going through the motion, but we're not benefiting from it. So we're not seeing what's supposed to be played out, played out because our faith ain't where it's supposed to be. Right. Watch this now. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. But, but, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for them. So everything is in place, John. Mm -hmm. Everything is in place. Is that right, sister? We go through, we, it looked like we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that not the appearance? Yeah. That's the appearance. But it's denying the power, though, yeah. because they're not expecting it. They're faithing in the right place. Yeah. Come on, I feel like that they that that whole scenario 
I feel like they're praying, but because they're not expecting a return on it, that they are not enjoying the it, benefit. That's exactly. They call the pressure not release. And, and come the, on, come on, the come true on. reward of it all. They, they're just like, oh wow, he did it. You know, when when he does answer, not hallelujah. He heard my prayer. Right. You know? <laughs> now, now watch this though, because this is important. Because see, when I'm really praying, watch what happens. Fear go away. That's, yes. yeah, that's the sorrow saying. and yeah. the pressure is lifted right. off of me. Right, anxiety, depression. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the benefit of real prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Because he the son says, free is free indeed, right? Yeah. That's where the, the freedom come in. Because he said, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Right. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. That's that peace that we're supposed right. to have. Is that right? Yeah. And if I'm truly in prayer, that's what I receive. Yes. That's the process, right? But that's what I'm supposed to enjoy. That's the benefit of prayer. Yeah. The right? That's the benefit. Time. That's the benefit. Mm. You got something? Yeah, yeah, real quick. So, man, I had, it, was, it was one thing I was, I was, I was going to say. Well, give it to him, Lord. Give it to him. I show him something different. So, Jesus used a very specific word. He said in the King James Version of the Bible. When he says, I will leave and I'm going to send you the comforter. Mm -hmm. All right. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. God is that other comforter to us. Right. But we don't see him as that. Right. Because if we did, then we would feel that relief. Right. When we went to him. Exactly. So think about my kids, man. Mm -hmm. The poor, the Kahala, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Whatever reason, Solomon scares the life out of her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he, he beat and got over by or whatever. And he just because he heavy handed or whatever, right. he made a touch then. She right. just. Get the holler. Right. She run right over to me. Right. The moment she gets to me. Right. She's right. Mm -hmm. Because though there may still be some pain there, or right. though the situation may not be completely over, I found a place of safety comfort and comfort. Yeah. And safety. So whenever whenever we're praying to come God. Come on, sir. Come on, come on. We we gotta view him as a place of comfort right. and yeah. safety to right. where when we get there, there's a Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And that's, yes, sir. that's and that and that's, that's not what we're, and that's not what we're what we're what we're doing. And we mm -hmm. gotta we yeah. gotta get to that place. If yeah. we would I mean again, we gotta study our Bible, we gotta spend time gotta so where it. we can understand the all the roles that God has and all the benefits that come with right. who he is. He's yeah. not just a savior, that's he's right. not just the Lord. Right. There's so much it's more to him. Yeah. There's yeah. so many more yeah. aspects that fall under right. that umbrella right. of I'm Savior sorry. and Lord, yeah. and right. we haven't tapped in yet. Right. We got this big basket of stuff that came with salvation, right. Right. and we only playing with two things that right. come right. in right. there. Right. There's right. so right. much there's more so in this more, basket man. that we could be enjoying. Right. We, we we got the trail mix, but we right. only picking out the MMs right. for whatever no reason. <laughs> yeah. Right. Them cashews is good. Them yeah. raisins is good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. but we go with M&M's. Eat the trail mix, right. man. Don't yeah. just eat the M&M's. You can right. go buy a bag of M&M's that you want. Right. Get the, eat the whole trail mix, right, man. This man. is all good for you, and, we, and, we're, and we're just missing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's either because we won't, we won't believe it or we just don't know. Whatever the case may be, we got to get it all. Right. Yeah. That's the benefit. That's the benefit. Of prayer. Yeah. We not, we not experienced, Brother John. We're not, we not enjoying the benefits yeah. of prayer, man, because of that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because we want to focus so much on this. I want to focus so much on that. And so now we're so, watch this, we made a gift, watch this, we made a gift God instead of God. Mm -hmm. We made spiritual gifts God because we focus on this. Are we so focused on this? But what about all that comes with it? We can't benefit from it, enjoy it because somebody got me focusing on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Okay, watch this. This is important, y'all. This is important. I don't y'all love Bible study? Yes, sir. You 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 have to you have to get to the place to where when you pray, when you know you're the entrance into prayer because a release comes, yeah. yes, a peace comes, yeah, right. All those things that come with prayer, I'm supposed to be able to experience those things, but I won't if I don't have the confidence that we read about in First John chapter five. Verse 14, I won't have, I got to have that confidence. Those elementary things got to be in place for us to benefit from prayer. Stop doing things you're not benefiting from. Yeah. Let's get in the right condition, position, and posture so that we can enjoy this God we say we have a relationship with. Yeah. Let's enjoy him in the full yeah. and stop playing yeah. church. Let's be the church. Yeah. Let's have the confidence we're supposed to have. Listen, he's done enough for us to have it. Yeah. Yes. He's done enough for us to have it. 
We're just not, we're just not believing. We're not just positioning ourselves to where we can benefit from it. It's time, though. Mm-hmm. It's time. Glory. It's time, family. Watch this now. Watch this now. Because it said, but the church, but the it said, but prayer was made, verse 5, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So they they're in the right place. Because watch this, where two or three gathered in my name. Come on, John, help me. I'm in the midst. And anything y'all touch as an agreement, I will make those things happen for you. If we really pray and those things happen, right. why? We cast all our cares upon him again because he kept yeah. us. If come unto me, all you that labor heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. Yeah. That's the benefit of my praying. Yeah. You've got to experience that or you haven't been into prayer. Mm-hmm. If you don't experience that. Yeah. Watch this now. Yeah. Watch this verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Watch this. Bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. So watch this now. If he's going to get out of prison, it's going to take an act of God. Right. Mm-hmm. And that means somebody's got to be praying. Come on, y'all pray for me because you know where I got to go, right? Because until prayer happens, there's no answer needed. If ain't nobody praying, there's no answer needed. If I don't ask a question, brother, I can't get an answer. Mm-hmm. So in order for this thing to happen, somebody's got to be praying for Peter. Come on. And the people that's supposed to be praying for him, guess what, John? What's praying for him? The church. Mm-hmm. If nobody is praying, watch this. If nobody is praying, then there's no answer coming. Can, can I share this with y'all? I remember when my daughter got in that car wreck. Here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. And I didn't know what was going on, man. He said, nobody is praying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, nobody is praying. I go to praying, watch now, I go to praying, and after I go to praying, I get a phone call. Janine, been an accident. Now I know why God said wasn't nobody praying. Yes. Right. But watch this, and I'm just going to go out on the limb and say this because this is what I believe. I believe the prayer kept something bad from happening. Amen. It didn't stop yes. the accident, but it saved some lives. Yes. Oh, y'all, come on, pray for yes. me. Yes. Yes. It saved some lives. The accident happened, John, but the accident happened because what nobody praying. Right. Lives got saved because somebody started praying. Right, right, right. I promise you I'm not I taking no credit right now. I'm, 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 I know what God right. is saying, and I know what God said to me, and I understood after I got the phone call what right. he was talking about. I, I will tell you, Bishop, when, when I have something serious going on and I go and I pray, I am literally exhausted afterwards. Because I had to really get rid of it, mm-hmm. and and sometimes if I don't really give it to God, mm-hmm. then I'm I'm still carrying it mm-hmm. and, and still dealing with it. Mm-hmm. But usually when I go into prayer, I just I'm totally exhausted mm-hmm. when I'm done because I've really He's really taken it from me. Mm-hmm. I've That's given awesome. it and He's taken it. Amen. <laughs> Here's what we need to we need to really understand. And I love this right here because watch this. When we listen, he's not just in prison. He's chained and he's bound. Right. Yeah. And he's not just chained and bound. He's chained and bound to somebody to else. Right. right. Come on, sir. I, I mean, so if, if there's going to be a release, there's going to have to be some prayer happening. Yeah. Or if, listen, because if there's no prayer going on, there will be no, no, no answer. Mm. There's no reason for an answer if there's no prayer going on, right? right. There's no reason for an answer if that's not a question being asked, right? We've learned that, have we not? Mm-hmm. Okay, so watch this now. And, and so watch this. And so that's going to have to be a sacrifice. Here's the sacrifice. The church is praying without ceasing. Yeah. They have gathered together. That means they've left their own personal houses and they've come together as the church. And they, this, is, this is the sacrifice that's being made. And so they're praying without ceasing. So they feel like, okay, if something's going to happen, I'm going to have to pray consistently to break this. Right. So they doing what's supposed to be done. What a rich young ruler did what was supposed to be done, but he walked away sorrowful. Is that right? Yeah. So watch this then. Watch this then because this is important that we understand. He was bound with chains and the keepers, uh, uh, watch this, before the door kept the prison. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Oh, here we go now. Hey, Sister Lane. Here we go now. Watch this here now because here's answer to prayer. Come here, somebody. Here's the answer to prayer. Watch this. God will do a thing and you not know it. They right. still praying. And they're not even expecting an answer, John, but God is already working on their behalf already. Yes. He's working on their behalf. And watch this now. They don't even know it, but he, he, here's what I want to share with you. If, if you are really praying, God will let you know when your answer came. Right. I said, 
So he'll let you know when your answer then came. Okay, so you get up now. I got you. you, you okay, I heard you. Stop. I got you. Thank get on. you, Lord. Yeah. God will show you when your answer then came. You ain't got to stay down there and pray all night. God will say, okay, I got it. You ain't got to do it all night. I'm up all night. You gonna go to bed. I'm up all night. You ain't got to be up all night. You done prayed. I done heard you. Now go to bed. Let me handle it because if you still up, that means you doing something. Right. Too much. Huh? Right? Yeah. Now you doing something. You don't need to be up all night. Go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And while you sleeping, I'm going to deal with this for you. Thank you, Lord. Because if you up, you're in the way. Y'all mm -hmm. don't want to talk to me. Yeah. If you still up, you're in the way. Mm -hmm. That means you still got something you think you can do. Go to sleep. God got it. Right. If you don't really catch it on him, you ain't got to be woke. Right. Go to sleep. He'll show you in your dream. I took care of that for you. Right. <laughs> That's like when Jesus was at the bottom of the of the boat sleep. Yeah. You know, in the middle of the storm. He was just Go sleeping to sleep. Good. God right. got it. Go to sleep. <laughs> But like you said, that's, that's where that faith comes in. That's if you, what a faith. If you know and believe. We're talking about benefiting from prayer tonight. Is that right? We're yes. talking about benefiting from the prayer. Don't make sense for you to do something you're not benefiting from it. Right. Prayer is all about you benefiting. It's all about you experiencing the God that you say you worship, serve, and love. Is that right? Yes. <clears throat> so watch this now. Verse 7 again. And behold, the angel of the Lord, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a form of Jesus Christ himself, y'all. Mm -hmm. Behold, the angel of the Lord, that's a capital L. Watch this. Came up on him, watch this, and a light shine in the prison. Where else do we see that happening? On the Damascus road right. with Saul. Right. Is that right? Yeah. This is the same God right here. This is the same God that talked to Saul on the Damascus road. Same one. This is the same one that talked to Abraham about him and Sarah having that baby. Right. Same one. Watch this now. And he smote Peter on the side. Hey, man. Who this God? Hey, man. All right. <laughs> Notice he didn't touch the folk that he was chained to. Right. Because he didn't come for them. Come on, y'all. He didn't come for them. He came for Peter. Watch this, brother. And he touched him on the side. Watch this. And raised him up. He, he, here's the word I love to see right here. Watch this here. Watch this. He raised him up saying, arise. Mm, amen. That's you. important, man. Yeah. You got to, that yeah. word has arise. got to be there. Every time God do something, if he raises somebody up, he say, arise. He's got to give that command. Mm. Because that command causes everything to turn you loose. Mm. When he say, arise, whatever's holding, you got to turn you loose. Because if it don't, you can't arise. That's called a preparatory command. The command of execution up quickly. It said, rise up quickly. That means don't take your time. And his chains fell off from his hands. Y'all see that, right? Mm -hmm. If he had not said arise, then chains wouldn't have fell off. Because that arise makes everything, watch this, everything got to pay attention and do what God say. Mm -hmm. If God tell him to arise, tell him to get up quickly, what's ever holding him got to turn him loose. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. praying for y'all bishop right now. Mm -hmm. Listen, family, look here, look here. Watch this now, verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. And bind and bind on thy sandals. Put your sandals on. Watch this now. And so he did. Somebody say, follow instructions. Follow, follow instructions. This is benefiting from prayer. This is benefiting from prayer. You can't benefit from prayer if you're not going to follow instructions. Bind up your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Put your sandals on. Put your clothes on because you can't be out here streaking, walking around. Put your stuff on and come on and follow <laughs> me. me. Y'all ready? Yes. Verse 9. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that, that, that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So it's something going on. He don't know what it is, but he knows something is going on. Oh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You don't have to understand. Just obey God. Amen. Right. Come on, come on. You don't have to understand. You just obey God. If you know God is speaking, you do what you know God is saying, whether you understand it or not. It's letting us know right here. He don't know what's going on. He know God to touch him. He knows something going on, brother, but he's not sure what it is. But he's following instructions, though. You know why? Because my sheep know my voice. Come here, somebody. Amen. My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't doing this with me tonight, are y'all? Yeah. 
this. I say, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger, they will not follow. Why is he following? Because he believes this is God talking to him. This is God talking to him, Brother John. So he's doing everything that he's being told. Here we go. Here we go. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. Watch this. Which opened to them. Now the gate just opened. Y'all see this, right? Because when God speaks, everything gets out of the way. Amen. Everything that needs right, to be open to right. you is going to be open to you. Right. You're not going to have to fight nothing. You ain't got to kick nothing down, push nothing over. When God say do something, everything is going to obey God and move out of your way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They didn't have to open it. They didn't need no key to the gate. That gate opened to them, sister, when they got to it. Because God had already spoke. Right. Oh, yeah. come on, somebody. Because God had already spoke. And God don't have to do nothing. Is that right? Sure. Watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. They came to the iron gate that led unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. That means they didn't have nothing to do, they had to touch it or nothing. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. Why? Because I didn't got you where I need you to be. Yes. He didn't got him where he needed for him to be. Now go on about your business. He didn't got him where he needed to be, Brother Timothy. And so he departed. Why? Because Peter didn't need him anymore. Right. Come here, y'all. Watch now. Watch now. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. And when Peter was come to himself, y'all see this. You know why I have to say that? It's because Peter was in the spirit. He had entered into a place and wow. he's following God. So natural yeah. things have natural. Th oh, y'all come here. Natural yeah. things can't touch him and it can't stop him. That's mm. right. That's how it is when you're walking in the spirit, friends. Yeah. I'm telling you. God will shut everything in the natural down, move it all out of your way. Yeah. So it is not a hindrance to you. Mm -hmm. I've experienced this on numerous occasions. Yes. God has had me witness to people in restaurants. Listen, sir, I wouldn't lie to you. And I can tell you while, while we're witnessing, everything shuts down and gets totally quiet. Mm -hmm. It's like everything done stopped. And after we threw ministering to the person, all of a sudden, things clink, 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 things come back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because now we're through. Yeah. But anything and everything would have been a hindrance, God stopped and locked it all down. Yeah. Right. This is the kind of thing we're talking about when you really in prayer. These are the kind of things that happen. Yeah. So everything that was in the natural that could have stopped him, God made it move out of the way. Gates mm -hmm. opened on their own. They didn't have to touch them or nothing. And God led him everywhere he needed to go. The Holy Spirit took him. And once he got him where he needed to be, watch this, I say he took him through the maze of life at that time. Because he didn't know which way to go. Peter wouldn't have known his way out of there if he'd have just said, okay, leave. He wouldn't have knew his way out. But here's what the Holy Spirit did. He got him through a place where nobody would stop him. First and second water said. And he took him to the gates that led to the city. Because that means there were other gates that did not lead to the city. Right. Come on here, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Right. Verse 11 again. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know. Oh, y'all, come on. Yeah. Wow. Come on. He said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That make you want to just shake a little bit, darling. Mm -hmm. Make you want to get excited, darling. Yeah. Because, see, the enemy think he got you. And he think ain't no way you can get away. Hmm. The devil got plans, you know that he got plans for you. Oh yeah. Yes. The devil got plans for you, but God got plans for you. Here's what here's 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 the conversation. Have you considered my servant Job? I, I can't touch Job. Why, why, why can't you? Because you got to hear his protection around Job. I, I can't get to Job. I want to get to Job. I can't get to Job. Watch it. Watch family. Go back and read it. Watch this. I can't touch Job because you got to hear protection around him. Now watch this now. This is the only reason I'm not considering I want to touch him. Uh -huh. But I can't because you, you won't let me. You got to hear protection around him. He said, but if you drop your hedge, I'll make him curse you to your face. Just drop that hedge. Just let me on in there. I'll, I'll get him to curse you to your face. He said, go ahead on. You 
read the story. If you haven't, go read it. Job didn't curse God. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Take take Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> he never cursed God, did he? Even when he touched his body, he didn't curse him. Now, he might have wished he was dead, but he never cursed God. Right. right. The devil got plans for you, don't you know? And he's listen. Don't don't believe this lie that folk want to tell you that the devil going up to God saying, "Let me touch you." That's not in the Bible. That the devil walking to and fro trying to see who he can devour. Right. He ain't asking God to mess with you. He's yes. messing with you. Right. He's the devil. He's not asking God for no permission to mess with you. He's messing with you <laughs> because that's who he is. Yeah. And because he can't mess with God, he messes with the thing that's most precious to God, and that's you. Right. I'm walking through this earth trying to see who I can devour. That's what I'm doing. Is that not what he's saying? Mm -hmm. And he said that on two occasions he said that. It's, it's funny that you say that, right? Because when you start thinking about it, right? <laughs> Lucifer wasn't listening to God when he was in heaven. Come on, man. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> he wasn't he listening to, listen to him now. Right. right. I think it's, it's because we, we get the wrong understanding when we read that. That scripture, because he wasn't he wasn't asking for permission. He was not asking he was, for permission. He was, I mean, when you look at it, he really was taunting God. No, no. God is the one that initiated the whole thing. Drop that head to see what happens. Yeah. You know, like that, that's kind of yeah, the, the, right. the stance he was taking. I'll show you if they really love you now. It wasn't no, hey God, please, no, just let me, just let me, nope, no. Yeah, he was being he was, yes, he was. He was being disrespectful. Exactly. Like he had been. Thank you, yeah. sir. That's exactly he, what he's he's been. He's been disrespectful like he had been. Yeah, he's been disrespectful. Oh, you think he loved you because? But I'll show you if you take I some of that stuff from I'll show you that he really don't love you like that. Hmm. And he loves you because you're giving him all this good stuff and you ain't right. nothing, nothing happen to him. Let something happen to him. Let me take that stuff and we'll see. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Are y'all praying for me? Mm -hmm. Listen now. Watch this now. We in verse 12. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary. Now, where, where is he at now, y'all? He's at the church. He's where prayer is being done. Is that right? Y'all right. uh -huh. ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. Watch this yeah. now. And as he considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose, whose surname was Mark, where, watch this, where many were gathered together, praying. Mm -hmm. and watch this now. And, and, and as Peter knocked at the door, the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. Watch this. And when she knew Peter's voice, y'all see this? When mm -hmm. she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Mm -hmm. This is prayer being asked, but watch this, family. They're not benefiting from it. Here it is, he is, verse 15. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, Is it his angel? So if it's his angel, that means he's dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means he's dead. And, and for his angel to show up, he's got to be what? Yeah, no. Because of ghosts. Because they thought folk came back as angels. Dead people came back as angels. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all, come on. Verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him. They were astonished. Mm -hmm. now, now, why are they astonished? Because they didn't expect God to do what they was praying for. Oh, Lack of faith, sister. So quickly Him being at that door should have been confirmation, like you said earlier, and it should have just, what's this? It should have just hyped in the party. We was already party because we already expected you to come. Right. Matter of fact, we got a sandwich for you sitting right over here in the glass of Kool Aid. That's what, that's what, what God was going had me, had me to, was gonna have me to say earlier um, about how she was saying it. You know, that's how, that's the approach they should have had. Right. You know? And that makes me think about what Reverend says all the time. You know, when I when I pray, I'm praising God in advance yeah. for what I believe that He's going to uh -huh. do. And again, we we have to get to that place right. where we believe that nothing is really impossible right. with God. Right. We still got these limitations on God. We still got mm -hmm. God in this little box, right. thinking that He can only do X, Y, Z, either right. because He ain't done it for us yet right. or because. We haven't seen them do it or whatever right. the case may be. Right. We got to get a full grasp of whether I've experienced it or not, right. whether I've seen it happen to anybody or not. The Bible says right. this. Right. And if, it, if this other part was true, this, this part, part true, true, this part right. true, this it's part true. true. Right. Mm -hmm. He said he can't lie. He said that there's nothing impossible right. for him. That That's literally true. means mm -hmm. nothing. nothing. That's, right. That's right. But I have to give him an opportunity. 
Just like a person say to you, you go for a job, they say you don't have no experience. Well, I won't have no experience unless you give me an opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. So watch this. I can't experience God unless I do what? Give him an opportunity. Exceedingly yeah. above all he can ask and call or think. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We have to give God that opportunity, though. Uh, we don't experience him if we don't give him the opportunity. We can't benefit from the prayer if we don't give God the opportunity to be God. Listen to what it says right here. So they had to do their astonished. Verse 17. But he beckoned unto them with his hand to hold their peace. Don't get too excited now, but watch this here. We don't want everybody to know I'm here. Right. They still look at me. But they still look at me. We don't want everybody to know I'm here. Right? Don't want everybody to know I'm here. Watch this. Declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. <clears throat> now notice what he's saying. Now notice this because he gives the glory to God. Now why? They were praying, so why didn't he give them some credit for the praying? He didn't give them no credit because first of all, they didn't believe it. They left me out the door. Yeah, they left me didn't believe it. So they don't get no credit anyway, right? He didn't even say thank you for praying. <laughs> right. Because they didn't even believe it. But God answered the prayer anyway. God answered the prayer. Man. Got the answer. It's knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. And they telling the girl, you crazy? You lost your mind. No, no. No, no. I haven't lost my mind. We've been praying for this very thing. It done happened. And y'all still don't want to receive it? Right. Oh, he wasn't in jail for real. Right. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying now? Because... If you look at it, remember, God opened every door. He released Everyone. the chains and everything. the, the, the God gates. Did. He opened everything all the way up into this place. Now, because of their lack of faith or where they was in the flesh, not in spirit, would not see, God could have opened that door for Peter, but they probably have been afraid. Exactly. Thinking, oh, it's really, you know, it's a ghost oh, or sure. a spirit or whatever, sure. you know. For sure, they had to open that door. Why, yeah. though? Here's why they had to open that door. It's because, watch this now, remember what God said. Until you uh, uh, connect with your five right. senses, right. it, it didn't happen. happen. Right. So they got to go to the door. This is the That's training. This is, this is our part to do. God can answer the prayer, but you got to embrace the answer. Mm. You got to let it in. You right. got to receive it from God. Yeah. So watch this. So they got to go to the door, sis, and open that door and let him in and embrace him. Because without it, watch this. She already said that was his angel. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Right? They already said that was his angel, so they expect he's dead. That's what they expected him to die. Hmm. No, but no, no, I answered the prayer. Right. And here's the deal. God would have gave them the answer and told them, listen, I done heard your prayer and everything. That would have been a release for them, and they'd have been satisfied. You know what? We're looking for God to release them. Don't we? God done already took care of this. And they would have disassembled. They could have disassembled. But they stayed right there. They continued to pray, and God brought the answer to them, and they still couldn't receive it. He still got the glory. He still got the glory. Hallelujah. God released me from prison is what he said. Y'all see that, right? Mm -hmm. God released me from prison. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, and we're going to be done. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? Notice, they didn't know what happened. All that happened, they stayed asleep. God got Peter up out of prison, got him where he needed to be, and it took till the morning for them to wake up and realize yep. he was gone. Yep. He made sure nothing was going to stop the answer of the prayer. Mm -hmm. The promise was, when two or three are gathered in my name. You see what right. I mean? Yes. Right. And so that says... That somebody in there believed. Other than Peter. Other than Peter. <laughs> because with, the, with her innocent faith, Rhoda believed. Right. I, I have to believe with my Holy Ghost mind that she had some belief because she was excited right. when she got to the door. She was excited. <laughs> hey, the prayer been answered. Y'all look. You crazy. Yeah. Go take you a cup of Tylenol and you go to sleep or something because you crazy. You didn't lost your mind. Right. You lost your mind. No, I haven't lost my mind. God done answered the prayer. And it's standing right out here. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
and why she walks away and it took him to keep knocking. Okay, well, who's that knocking out there? She's so excited that the prayer being answered, she runs back to, to tell, tell them, them mm -hmm. hey, the prayer is answered. Mm -hmm. That's why he's still there. Okay, I need everybody to know. Right. The prayer is right. answered. It's answered. Yeah. We cannot benefit from the prayer if we don't have the confidence that God can do what only God can do. We saw the situation. There's no way he was getting out of prison. Look here, look, look. They was tending him like a like like a, a, a turkey for Thanksgiving. They was getting ready to do him. Because the Jews enjoyed my man getting killed, John getting killed, right? Enjoyed him getting killed. So guess what? Oh, we're getting ready to kill another one. If, if that made you happy, you're really going to be happy when we kill another one, right? We, we got we to gotta, we gotta grab hold of this thing and take this thing for what it's really worth. Stop taking it lightly and have the confidence that we say we have in God and watch God do the miraculous. Oh, bro, we this close, man. We, we this close. You see, I, no, no, we this close, man. Yeah. It, it's at the door. Yes, I, I was sharing with, with John earlier, with my wife earlier, I heard the Lord say, spring forward. Yeah. Hmm. When I came here today, I got in the car, I'm walking to the door, and I heard the Lord say, Spring forward. You're about to spring forward. Amen. Yeah. Now, now, how that's going to play in, when that's going to play in, I didn't receive it from God. While I was in here praying today, God began to say some, some other things to me about us. Yeah. And so I'm just rejoicing. I'm, I'm walking in the joy of the Lord right now. And I'm refusing to be downtrodden. I'm refusing to believe the lies of the enemy or any of that garbage that's going on in the media and everything. I'm refusing that. I'm refusing that. It's all about God getting some glory. He's going to get him some. Oh, he's going to get him some, sister. And if I got to be excited by myself, I'm going <laughs> to purpose myself to be excited. And here's my prayer that God is going to lock y'all minds and heart to mind. That when God says something out of my mouth, you're going to think the way I'm thinking and not the way you think. You're going to think the way your bishop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I told John, when I told him he was sitting over there on that honor over there, when he said this, he repeated what I said, spring forward, and I felt it in my spirit. I wasn't expecting that, wasn't even looking for that, but when he opened his mouth, he, he repeated it. It connected like Mary mm -hmm. and her cousin Elizabeth when the Holy Ghost. Right. It connected. Now I'm looking for us when we open our mouth and say something about it, we say the same thing. Right. Okay. All right. Because that's the unity of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And that's what God's going to do. He's going to tie us together. Yeah. He's going to tie us together. So we say in the same thing. When we hear something, we receive the same thing about it. Talking about benefit from our prayers. It's time to get answers, right? It's time to get answers. Okay, but I have to have the confidence that I say I have in God. And it can't just be a show. It's got to be for real. It's got to be sincere. And I really believe that God has showed me that he is putting us in a position to where we're going to all agree. And I don't mean no harm, but I need you to hear the Holy Spirit right now. He's going to make it to where there are those of us who are together that's in agreement that can walk in agreement with the things that God is saying. We're not going to try to explain it away and say, no, no, God just said it, and this is how I receive it. Okay, Lord, let's walk with this. Right. Because that's two or three gathered in his name. That means we're all thinking the same. Amen. We're all thinking the same. It's time to get answers. Yes, Prayer prepares us. Yes, Prayer prepares us. Mm. Next week, God willing, next week we're going to deal with another we're going to deal with another passage of scripture out of the book of Acts. And we're going to see how it is when we pray in, we can expect an answer from God. There's another thing that we have to do. Uh, I ain't going to share with you right now. We're going to deal with that next week. We'll deal with that next week. And so be praying, family, seriously. Be praying right now and understand we, we're in a very unique place right now. Very unique place. And God is, God is being God. And he's just looking for us to get on board with him. We're not going to take this lightly. Mm -hmm. 
not going to take this lightly. We're going to take this serious, and we're going to be sincere in our praying, and we're going to be focused and intentional in our praying. Right. And we're going to watch God be God. We're going to watch God do the thing he's talking about. Because it's time for him to get some glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So, friends, here's what we have to do. <coughs> we don't wake up with faith. Faith coming by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. That's how faith comes. Well, Jesus is faith. He's the measure of faith that Paul was talking to the Corinthian church about. But then it does only he said all men don't have faith. And the reason all men don't have faith is because all men don't have Jesus. He is the faith. Just like God is love, Jesus is faith. Because scripture says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's what the scripture says. And Jesus is the, the scripture says in, in Revelation it says that that Jesus' name is the word. His name is the word. So when faith comes about hearing and hearing by the word of God, then that makes Jesus faith, then doesn't it? Right. That makes Jesus faith. Faith coming by hearing. Here's what God said. He told Peter, James, and John on Mount Transfiguration. He said, hear ye him. Forget about Moses and Elisha and hear my son. Because faith coming by hearing. hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And God told us to listen to him. Listen to Jesus. And so the only way you're going to have faith, you're going to have to listen to Jesus. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. The scripture says that God sent the spirit of his son to live in the hearts of every born again believer. That means he sent us faith. He sent us faith. No way we could have found faith. Couldn't pay for faith. He gave us the measure of faith. Jesus is the measure of faith given to us. The scripture says Jesus is the faith. It's his faith. It's his faith. So how do we get to that place? To where we get this faith? Well, here's what Jesus said. Your faith and made you whole. He's got to become my faith. He become the God that I believe in. He becomes my faith. He says, your faith. That means because I had faith in him and believed in him, he said, your faith. He's my faith. Your faith have made you whole. That's me owning him as my Lord and Savior. Now it's my faith. Lord have mercy, Jesus. So here's what we want to do. I want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. I want you to stop doing whatever you're doing right now. And please pay attention to this very moment right here so you get what you pay for. If you pray this prayer with a sincere heart, the faith that you need will come to you. The faith that you need to believe in God, to have a relationship with God, will come. Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Do you believe that? That God sent his son for the propitiation of your sins, to pay the penalty for your sins. Do you believe that? Let's pray the prayer together. We pray it out of a sincere heart. Life, as you know, is going to change. I didn't say everything was going to be perfect because we all, we have to grow in Christ. We have to grow in Christ. We become babies in Christ. We have to grow. Just like in the natural, we have to grow. And the closer we get to God, the better we'll be. Here's the prayer. Father God in heaven, I surrender my life to you today. I ask you to forgive me of my sin, and I repent of my sin. I receive and accept your uh -huh. son, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. To reign and to rule over my life. From this day forward. Father God in heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will fill me with your Holy Spirit that now lives on the inside of me. Teach me how to obey your commandments and walk in your statutes. And Father, with your help, I promise to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer right there, you just got born again. Here's what we want you to do. Let somebody know on this very day you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Let the Holy Spirit lead you to the place he wants you to grow and serve him. And then get baptized. That's how we share the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We got some literature we want to send you to help you grow in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want it, if you desire to have it, leave us some information and we'll send it to you. If you have any questions or comments about anything that took place, leave them in the comment box and we'll get to you as soon as we can. May God bless you. May God keep you. our sincere prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so very much for every person that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for those who have chosen to give their life to you today, to walk with you today. We thank you as you make our crooked places straight and rough places smoother. God, as life changes for them, I thank you for adding new people in their life that's going to help them go through the journey, that's going to help them come to know themselves as the new believer and Christian that you've already intended for them to be. I pray for each and every listener right now that you will tend to the very need of each and every person right now. The most urgent thing on the on the docket for them, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We look to see you Sunday at 1145 if God says the same. Have a good evening. Bye-bye, friends.